We are going to begin right away with our rest day restorative practice. This is a great one to use anytime you are wanting a bit of movement on your rest days when you need that deep recovery, particularly after some intense strength training. This is part of our Be Strong series as a way to complement your strength training days. So it's an active recovery and rest day. Great to use anytime throughout your cycle, but can be particularly supportive in the late luteal phase, kind of right as your period is is approaching. So it's right around the corner and you're needing some soothing movement to kind of help your body stay in flow for the rest of this cycle. For today, all you'll need is a block or an elevated surface. You can use a firm pillow, um, but don't sweat it. If you don't have this, you can always go without and simply use uh, a mat or the surface beneath you. So we'll set that off to the side for now. Our first posture for today is going to be a child's pose. So you can bring the big toes to touch the knees wide apart. And you can lower the hips to the heels, but if you find that this creates too much flexion in the knees, this is your first opportunity to use the block. You can lower your hips onto the block. You can also just have the hips kind of elevated over the knees. The key here is you want to try and find a place that you can relax. So if you're finding that you have to hold the pose or there's any gripping, you wanna find a place that's a, a bit more easeful. So coming into child's pose, whatever that looks like for you, allowing the arms to stretch out, but without kind of overreaching. So you don't want to lock the elbows. Just let there be a gentle bend there. And just settle in for a few breaths here, in and out through the nose. If you can, hear that echo that your breath creates between your body and the floor. And use this as an opportunity to turn inward. Move your senses from kind of the space around you to what's happening right here on your mat, in your body, in your mind. And then as you keep your hips anchored to your heels, begin to reach and walk your hands over to the left. As you do this, stretch through the fingertips, anchor your right hip crease down into the ground. So really pressing the right hip into the right heel, stretching the right side body here, expanding breath into the rib cage. So really inflate the lungs so you feel that opening, that awakening, just by virtue of taking a slightly deeper breath. Notice if your shoulders are shrugging at all, can you soften them down the back? Maybe move your neck side to side, your chin side to side. And then very slowly walk the hands over to the right, this time anchoring the left sitting bone to left heel, trying to create as much length as you can between the left hip crease and the left armpit. Once again, enjoying a few rounds of very big breath here, inflating the lungs so you can really move the rib cage open and close. And then slowly walking through center here, stretching straight out in front of you. And we'll slowly roll up to a tabletop position. Let your hips sway side to side. Bring your shoulders over your wrists, hips directly over the knees. We'll enjoy several rounds of cat and cow. So as you inhale, soften the belly down, shine your sitting bones back, extend the heart and gaze up. And then from the tail on your exhale, begin to round the spine, draw the belly in, press through the back of the heart, down into the hands, chin to chest. Inhale, use the entire length of the breath to open the spine, open the heart and chest. And then as you exhale, gather awareness, draw your energy back in. Inhale. Taking energy from the outside, inflating the lungs. And then as you exhale, letting it go, curling back in. So you could create an entire practice from this rhythm, from this pulsation in and out. So just be here. See if you can experience bone by bone the movement that is available in the spine. Last one here. And exhale. All 
From here, begin to open your left arm out to the side, pressing into the right hand. Imagine a gentle touch to your left palm, really opening the chest. And then take that left hand down beside you, press the palm firmly into the mat, and bring your left ear, left shoulder down to the earth. Kind of wing your right elbow up in space and press down with your right hand to twist the torso deeper. Really press through the left palm so that you can feel that stretch across the front of the chest. Notice again if your shoulders are shrugging, draw them down the back. So really just opening the front side of the body here, the inner arms, and slowly coming back up. We'll switch sides now. So as you're ready, inhale, sweep the right arm open, press that palm to rotate the chest as best as you can, squaring the hips to the mat. And then bring that right hand down beside you, right ear, right shoulder to the earth. So winging the left elbow up, pressing into the left fingertips to twist a bit deeper. You might keep the gaze very soft throughout this practice, maybe even closing the eyes where appropriate. So you can really move your attention, your awareness inward. That's part of the luteal phase, if that's where you're joining me, is that pull inward. More introspective, more introverted. Come back through center here, shake that out. And then from tabletop, simply step your right foot forward to the outer edge of your mat. You can separate the thigh bones a bit by moving your left knee further back in space. Turn your right toes out to the side so you have that angle in the foot. And then allow your hips to soften. So this is another opportunity to use the block if you have it. If you need to bring the earth a bit higher so that you can keep the heart open and focus the stretch in the hip here. If you have your block, you can shift it or bring your left hand to the mat and kind of roll onto your left hip, your left side, just ever so slightly. Bring your right hand to your inner right knee and then press your heart in the opposite direction. Soften the shoulders away from the spine. So you might feel this along the left hip flexor. You might even feel a gentle tug in the low back on the left side as that hip flexor lengthens. And then coming back through center, just for a breath to kind of reset, you can straighten that leg any amount. You can always bring the block up to higher elevations if you need it to keep the spine long and the heart stretching forward. And then as you come back into bending that knee, heel toe your right foot all the way over to the left. We're gonna come onto the knife edge of that foot. So we're moving toward half pigeon. This can be a very intense stretch. So the full version, you bring your shin down and both hips come down to the mat. If this creates too much strain, anywhere in the body, so whether it be the hips or the back, you can always bring that back knee in and be in kind of more of a, a rotating star or wheel of life shape where you have this zigzag in the shins. So find your option here and then we'll begin to move deeper wherever you are. So you might be here upright in pigeon and then wherever you, your back knee is, just start to fold your body over. So creating a bit deeper sensation in that right hip. If you need to, you can bring your block. You might rest your forehead on the block We'll be here for several breaths, really dialing the right hip crease open. And if your left leg is extended here, really press the top of that left foot into the mat. If this is creating any discomfort in the right hip, you can always heel toe the right heel closer to your body. So less of that 90 degree angle in the shin. So noting noticing how you can create that edge for the sensation. You want to be feeling this deeply, but without kind of gripping. If you find that you're having to hold your breath or you're just waiting for it to be over, make some adjustments so that it is more sustainable. 
you find that you are in that sustainable place and you want to add a bit for the upper body, kind of create a window with your right elbow, lift your elbow up, thread your, excuse me, your right elbow up, thread your left arm under and rotate the upper body. So just allowing your upper body to rest for a few moments in this rotation. As you soften the lower body, let it melt into the mat. So where can you relax a bit into the sensation? It's natural for your body to tighten up in the presence of a deep stretch. It's protecting you. So you can offer a bit of gratitude, thank you, and also you're okay. It's okay to let go, it's okay to relax. Last big breath here in this half pigeon pose. And then slowly coming back up. So we'll turn now to the long edge of your mat. So toward the left, coming into a diamond shape. So rather than cobbler pose, I want your heels to be a bit further from your sitting bones. You can use your hands on your shins to lengthen the spine here, really pull back on the shins as you lift the heart. And then thread your hands under your legs. This might be where you stay, this might be pretty intense. If you can, you can reach your hands all the way for the tops of your feet. Once you're there, begin to use your arms to broaden the legs apart. And then any amount begin to round in. So you can feel this maybe along the upper back, chin moves to chest. You might feel this all the way down to the hips. If you need a block, you can place it between your feet and rest your forehead on the block. Breathing deeply here, just a few rounds. This kind of targets the outer legs. Kind of that structure on, on the outer knees all the way down. And then slowly begin to come up. You can take your block with you. We're going to turn now to tabletop facing the other direction. So coming into table here, just shifting the hips side to side. Walk your hands slightly further forward, tuck your toes under, and just enjoy kind of an extended cat and cow. So as you inhale, soften the belly, find that cow shape in the spine. And then as you exhale, rather than moving into cat, find downward dog. Stretching the backs of the legs here, lengthening the spine. Inhale, the knees gently touch down. Let that wave carry all the way through the crown, lift the gaze. And then as you exhale, send the sitting bones up and back. Any amount, straighten the legs, lift the hips, downward dog. So we're really just leveraging the full mobility in the spine. Knees come down, lengthen the spine. And then as you exhale, take the belly toward the thighs, lift the hips skyward, find downward dog. <laughs> this is again one of those <laughs> rhythms that I could be in for a very long time. So we'll just enjoy one more so I don't get carried away. And as you exhale, send the hips up and back. And this feels so soothing, so grounding to move in this way. So if you're moving through water, pedal out your feet here for a few breaths. And then come back down into table. We'll take that same sequence for the hips now on the left side, stepping the left foot forward, bringing your block to the center here. Turn your toes, your left toes, out to the left so you have that nice wide angle in the foot. And then begin to soften the hips down towards the earth. So again, you can always elevate the block as needed if this is creating a lot of sensation in the hips, or you can have your hands down on the mat. Let your hips kind of rock side to side. Just explore where you need this stretch to move, where you need it to be. Maybe softening into the side body a bit there. 
And then as you're ready, keep your right hand on the mat or on a block. Begin to come onto your right side just a touch. Left hand to the inner left knee. Press the left thigh away. Send your heart in the opposite direction. So really pressing into the knife edge of your left foot. Noticing how you feel this differently to the first side. Just letting that be information that you can receive. Soften your shoulders down the back. And coming back through center. Transitioning now to our half pigeon. So the left foot, heel toes to the right. Come on to that knife edge once again and then aim your left knee to the top left corner of your mat to come down. You can square the hips if your back leg is straight. Otherwise, you might bend that back knee and come into kind of a half version of this pose where you can still feel the sensation in the left hip, but without the strain that might come along. Wherever you are, kind of take whatever shimmies and shakes you need to get comfortable. And then you can begin to lower the torso toward the mat, resting for several breaths here. If your back leg is straight, anchoring the top of the foot, the knee, the top of the thigh into the mat. And allowing yourself to just be here with your breath, hear the sound. You might feel a bit of heat as you create this kind of cave between your body and the floor. So we'll be here for several more breaths. If you'd like to add a bit of sensation here, you can come up, create a window with your left elbow, and then thread the right arm under can take the palms one on top of the other or just let, let your arms rest wherever they fall. I like to join the hands, maybe interlace the fingers so you can use your top hand to gently pull the bottom arm underneath you, creating more rotation. But again, that can create a lot of sensation in the hip. So just finding that edge and then backing off a touch where you can sustain this shape for several more breaths. Slowly coming out only when you're ready, lifting the torso. And then come back into our tabletop position. This time, lifting up to kneeling, so coming onto your shins. We'll find eagle arms, so wrapping right arm under left. You might take opposite shoulders if that feels good, or full eagle arms where you're wrapping elbows, forearms, and wrists. And then very gentle back bend here, so not your full expression of camel, but just really lifting the arms, the elbows skyward to move into the upper back. Shift your thighs slightly forward. Gentle squeeze in the glutes to stabilize. Press through the tops of the feet and the shins. And then as you exhale, round curl in. So we're coming back to that full range of motion in the spine, lifting up moving your forehead and your thumbs together and then rounding in. So you just find your range of motion and kind of take out the edges, make it very fluid. Last time coming in here. And slowly rise, release the arms. You can take them out behind you for a moment, just stretch the fingertips towards the earth. And then we'll switch sides. So left arm under, right arm over for eagle arms. Just three rounds of breath here, inhaling. You might keep your thumbs and your forehead together. And then round. So really press into the upper back. Feel that stretch. This bind in the arms can create a lot of sensation in the shoulders. Inhaling and exhaling, round in. Last one, kind of your biggest expression. Expand into the spine and then slowly release. 
Let your arms come back down, your hands touch down. And then we'll come on to forearms for Sphinx Pose. So hip points into the mat, forearms pressing down. Really lift through the heart here. So the goal in Sphinx is to create a very gentle backbend, one that is accessible, doesn't require a lot of strain or effort, can soften your neck, roll the chin in one direction, and then the other. So this is a great posture for relieving neck tension, shoulder tension. So just be in that experience for several rounds of breath. Just noticing where your neck might be a bit tight. And then take your left forearm, bring it parallel to the short edge of your mat. Bend your right knee, reach for the outer edge of your right foot. Finding a quad stretch here. If you can, keep the heart upright. Otherwise, resting the forehead on your left arm hugging right heel to right sitting bone, and then squeezing the inner knees to the midline so that you have that alignment in the legs, inner rotation of the hips. Stretching the front side of the body, the right leg here, and then we'll switch. So take right forearm parallel to the short edge of the mat, bend the left knee, reach for that left foot. You might Get a bit of a shoulder stretch here first, and then release the torso down, hugging left heel to the sitting bone here, and really magnetizing the inner knees to the midline. So trying not to let your left knee flare out. You might press energetically your hip points down into the mat to create a deeper sensation. And then slowly release. We're going to transition onto the back now. Bring your block with you. So roll over onto your back, coming into supported bridge pose. So let your feet be hips width distance apart, outer edges of the feet and legs parallel. Lift your hips to bring the block to your low back. So just make sure you have the block positioned in the right place. It should be on the flat part of your spine. So not digging into the low back muscle, but really you're on the hard triangular bone at the base of the spine. So it shouldn't create any discomfort. It should just be this very calm, supported position. If you need a bit more sensation, you can always turn the block up to a higher elevation. I would avoid going to the full height. That can be a bit too much for our goals for today. We're aiming to keep this restorative. So really just letting the hips come slightly above the heart. We get this gentle inversion, one that can be safely practiced anytime during your cycle just to increase blood flow to the heart, which in turn slows your breath rate down. And then just taking care, making sure that your block is in a stable position. Keep your left foot on the mat, begin to hug your right knee into your chest. So this might create a lot of sensation, depending on where you experience tightness. It might be in the left side in the hip flexor, it might be in the right side in the hip. If you can though, begin to extend that left leg long, bring the left heel to the mat. Breathe through it. So we're just creating a bit of elevation for the pelvis such that you can have that deficit position in the left leg. So this allows us to stretch the hip flexor, the psoas. Really reach through the sole of the left foot here, particularly the inner edge. And then you might stay here. If it feels okay, you can start to straighten the right leg skyward. wherever you are allowing the shoulders to be soft. So if the block is creating too much strain in the back, you can either lower the elevation or remove it altogether. And then 
slowly come down, bring your right foot to the mat, and we'll switch sides, hug your left knee into your chest. Just acknowledging each step of the way, whether you need to use this as your end point or maybe move further. So if you're coming along a little bit further, extend the right leg long. Reach through the big toe side of that foot, really lengthen the right side. Again, you might keep the gaze soft or even close the eyes. As you receive sensation, can you also bring attention to your breath? Notice if you are holding in any way. Can you soften the chest, soften the belly? And then bend that right knee, bring the right foot to the mat. You might choose to extend the left leg. If it feels okay, you can extend both legs. Just finding where your edge of sensation is. And again here, trying to keep the hips level. So if you find that as you enter these positions that the hips begin to tilt, just come back until you can level the pelvis, until you both hip points are in the same plane. And then slowly come down, bend both knees, press into the feet to release the block. <laughs> So we'll shift now into legs up the wall for our final resting posture. You can take this pose. If you don't have a wall, you can always come back into that supported bridge pose and enjoy that gentle inversion. If you're coming into legs up the wall, shimmy your body so that your hips are touching the wall. And then simply reach your legs up and rotate so that your torso is perpendicular to the wall. We're coming into this final restorative posture. If you like, if you want kind of a bit of a deeper inversion, you can always bring a block under the hips here. Wherever you are, you want your hips to be as close to touching the wall as possible. So you don't want a lot of space between your legs and the wall. Let your knees bend so you're not having to lock the knees or keep the legs straight for this pose and then let your shoulders relax to the sides and just feel the change in circulation so as more blood now flows to the heart you might feel a natural wave of relaxation wash over you Lick your lips, move your jaw side to side. So you let the eyelids close, soften the space between your eyebrows. And look for any patterns of holding or tension that might be there that you may not be aware of in the face and the shoulders. And you can keep the arms by your sides or maybe bring your hands onto your body. Notice where your mind is in this moment. Can you create a bit of separation between where you are and your thoughts. So can you become an observer? Don't try to force your mind in any direction. Just let it go where it may. And just watch for it. Notice where it likes to go. Does it drift to the past, to the future? Does it find a particular theme, be it your to-do list or what's coming next? Does it gravitate to a particular person or place? As you watch your mind, just being open to what that's telling you. Every 
thought we have creates our reality. So stepping into the power that exists when you can write your own story. And just by observing, shifting, informing your thoughts. What kind of reality are you creating with the thoughts that you have? Hope that you will stay in this restorative place for as long as you need, as long as you like, as long as you can. And I will close our practice here together such that you can linger a bit longer. So from a place of deep gratitude, I want to thank you for being here and for letting your body be moved.